Everything seems closer and more intimate in the Granite State. You get off the plane, walk across the street from the terminal, go directly to your rental car, drive a few miles, and there you are with the voters of New Hampshire as they gather around a presidential candidate. Hi, I'm Bob Goldman. I'm here in New Hampshire, day before the election, working for supporting Donald Trump, our president, because uh, I believe in, in, in him. I believe I, every time I hear him, he says exactly what I'm thinking, and I think he'll make a great president. A majority of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. And the candidates recite their usual lines, but what is different here, what makes New Hampshire, New Hampshire, is that the candidates often take questions for an hour or more, often difficult, personal questions from residents who talk to the presidential aspirants about everything from their hopes and dreams to their fears and worries for the country's future. They talk about a spouse with Alzheimer's disease or a child with autism. They express their worries about how climate change affects the forest in the White Mountains. The voters draw the candidates closer into their world here, a world of suburbs in the southern tier and of breathtakingly beautiful lakes and mountains in the north. The state has a reputation for being prickly and independent and libertarian. Even the most strident supporters of the New Hampshire primary acknowledge that the state is hardly representative of the country. It is 94% white. But what is unquestioned is that the state has well performed its quadrennial role and will relish that opportunity as long as the political parties allow it. The citizens embrace their responsibility, turning out in numbers that few other states can approach, and they do so with glee and fervor. They attend candidate forums at churches and VFW halls and gymnasiums. They travel over hilly roads, brave the snows, and cast their ballots at town meeting halls. It's just little old me, folks. I mean, my dad carried mail on his back, and his father was a coal miner. He died of black lung. He was losing his eyesight as he was getting older. My mother's mother could barely speak English, and look at this. Uh, I have been blessed. And so, for one Tuesday in winter, their voices are heard, they make a difference, and then all of a sudden, the carnival is over, the candidates and media pack up, sweeping out like a swift-moving storm, landing in other states where things move more quickly and, inevitably, less intimately than in the first primary state of New Hampshire. This is Michael Cranish of the Washington Post, reporting from here in New Hampshire.